か、Hello, welcome to another stream. This is the new game announcement live stream. Wizard Foo's new game. That's right. This game is in the Songbringer universe. It's going to be multiplayer and a, it's creative five on five arena combat. What I mean by creative is that it's um, you basically carve out lanes each match and you can switch roles. At any point in the match, and you can also build towers. So, um, I will cover that again. I'm sure at a whole bunch of points in this live stream. I just wanted to get it out of the way there for the YouTube video. Y'all watching on YouTube, hello, everybody on Twitch, hello. And as soon as people start chatting and stuff like that, I'll I'll be covering in more detail what that means. Um, so this game is called Load Ragger. Um. And yeah, it's it's called Load Ragger because your goal is to go steal the other team's lodestone and drag it back to your base. So that's basically it. Um, it's a voxel-based engine, but I want it to look like pixel art. So at first, this is going to be really, really uh, 3D looking and voxel-y. That's what I've got so far, but that's only because I haven't got the shaders going. So once I get the shaders going, which actually is going to have to happen pretty soon because I'm running into some huge uh, performance issues trying to do this voxel engine the way I'm, the way I'm imagining. Let me show you what I mean. Um, so it's a voxel engine kind of like this. It won't be this zoomed in. There'll be, you know, of course, there'll be five on five players. So there's lots of different players, and um, you can see that when it's like. It's, it's running fine until I add a whole bunch of voxels, and then it just turns into hor horrible performance. A lot of it's because I'm trying to do dynamic shadows. You can see that the character has a shadow there. Um, so, anyways, what my goal eventually, though, is... Oh, I'm considering this. I'm not sure how this will look out in the end, but what I want to do is have every one of these voxels correspond to a pixel, and that way it'll be 3D, and it'll be voxel, but it'll look like a 2D pixel art game, sort of. That's the concept, at least. So, anyways, today, instead of coding, which I've done a hell of a lot of so far, I want to do some, pick some voxel art. So, I'm gonna open up Magic of Voxel and start drawing some trees and chat with y'all whenever you get on the stream. So, uh, I'm going to start with, um, I've already got a character model. You know, this is Rock from Songbringer, of course. Uh, the, this won't be Rock in the end, of course. You'll be able to customize your character. So this is like a, imagine hopping into, it's going to be a hub world where you uh, can do all this customization and join matches and stuff like that. What's up, Rock 2 Robot? You were just wondering. Hey! Crazy timing. Hey, welcome, man. Haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're doing good. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. The male... Uh, so this isn't going to look like Rock in the end. This will be a customizable character. Lighter Thief, what's up? You'll be able to hop into this hub world, create your character, change your skin color, and all that kind of stuff. And you'll also be able to have armor upgrades. So you'll be able to, like... Kind of like Diablo, where you can have different sections of armor, like your shoulder armor, your breastplate, your arms, your legs, and all that kind of stuff. You'll have different sections of armor that will change the look of your character and also apply different stats. So, Boogie, what's up? How you guys doing? Um, yeah, so I, you know what? I'll do this spiel again now that y'all are here. Um, basically... This is the, the new game, Low Dragger, and uh, it is creative five-on-five -five arena combat. Uh, so basically what that means when it comes to creative... Hey, Scissor, what's up, man? Songbringer's release was great. It was an incredible success. Um, 
Uh, it wasn't a huge financial success, but it was enough of a financial success to allow me to make the next game, which is more than you can possibly ask for in this market. Uh, the, this market is crazy getting flooded with ga other games. So to be able to stand out and even succeed at all is an incredible, huge success. So it was great. Um, so yeah, Low Dragger is creative five-on-five -five arena combat, which means that basically in each one of these five-on-five -five matches that I imagine will last maybe 15 to 30 minutes, um, you get to carve out your lanes. So you'll be in an arena where there's a whole bunch of trees and you carve out lanes by chopping down trees. And you chop down trees when you're one of these rolls. So there's there's like eight to ten, I'm, I'm not sure exactly offhand, but there's like eight rolls where you can switch those rolls at, while you're playing, right? You pick up a different weapon and that switches your roll. So basically you there's a lumberjack, there's a builder, there's a knight, there's an archer, there's a mage, there's a bomber, there's a healer, um, and basically there's all these roles, and you can switch it, switch them at runtime while you're playing in the match. And the other part that's creative about it is that you can build towers. So you can, it's like, basically it's kind of like a, like a, a MOBA, I guess you could say. Um, but more like capture the flag for its goal. And you can, um... You can build towers. So imagine if you're imagine if like in League of Legends or whatever, you could build towers instead of just having them die. I mean, it would totally mess up League of Legends the way League of Legends is. But this game is a lot different, and so it's basically that's those are three of the huge creative parts of why this is a creative five on five game. Uh, so that's kind of the concept. And it's called Low Dragger because your goal as a five on uh, your team's five players versus the other team's five players, your goal is to go sneak into the other team's base, steal their lodestone, and drag it slowly back to your base. So the champ as here can actually do that. Oh yeah, really? They can change what they do. That's cool. What's up, belligerent? Hey, yeah, so if you guys have any questions, shout them out about the new game and stuff like that. Um, oh, Azir can place towers, really? That's cool. Oh, yeah, another thing that the builder role can, can do to build stuff is, like, they can build bridges, they can build fake trees, um, and other stuff like that. So it's not just towers that the builder role can build. So, um, yeah, and so you customize the character. When you first start the game, you get to customize what your character looks like. And then each match, you earn armor, kind of like Diablo, where you get all these sections of armor, and they change the way you look, and they add stats. You bought a standing desk? Hey, you've seen this draggy mechanic in tower defense games before. Yeah, oh, really? Which ones? Um, I was thinking of what kind of inspired me for that was this game called Fat Princess, and Fat Princess kind of does that too, where you have to sort you have to drag the princess back to your side of the base. Basically, it's basically just capture the flag. But uh, oh, and then also there'll be a battle royale mode. Uh, it's huge right now, of course, the battle royale. But it's a really simple thing to add to this game. Where so there's the the main mode is your five on five. But then there's another mode where everybody is on their own and the goal is just to stay alive as long as you can. Everybody tries to kill each other. How big will the maps be? It's like, uh, it's about the same size as a, as a MOBA map would be. Yeah. And yes, I did work on a MOBA-like game on iPhone. That was my project before Songbringer. It was called Hero Bash. So I have experience creating a MOBA before, and I've learned I learned a lot with that project, especially about uh, marketing. So, but yeah, I know how to do the programming part of it. I've done the multiplayer. I've done the multiplayer is the hardest part. The multiplayer was crazy hard. Um, it was crazy hard to get it to work really, really smoothly. Salad dongs, what's up, man? How you been? Oh, it's been a while. 
D marketing as in don't pay random 5Ks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You Do you remember when I actually told talked about that before? You been doing good? That's great to hear. Awesome. Yeah, I definitely learned a few lessons with Hero Bash. Yeah, it totally was. And it still is, you know, it's still people are enjoying it. And I'm glad for, I'm super glad for Songbringer. It's like, I can't wait to do Songbringer 2 at some point, you know, but it, I really need a break from Songbringer to do something else. That's why this low dragger multiplayer game is happening. Um, but yeah, eventually I do want to get back and do Songbringer 2 and 3 if possible. How was my experience with the publisher? That was really, really great. Yeah. Hey, dude, thanks for buying it on Switch. Oh, sweet. Yeah, my experience working with a publisher. Okay, let me let me just preface that um, with uh, when I was 18 years old, I released my first game. Well, no, I was 15 when I released my first game on my own. I tried to publish my own game on floppy disks. Back in 1995, I was trying to publish my own game on floppy disks and trying to sell it on BBSs. And I sold like, I think two copies of my video game in an entire year. Okay, so that was like my first publishing experience. My second publishing experience was I got a publisher, right, when I was about 18, and they helped me pub publish my next game. Uh, but it was horrible. It was the like one of the worst experiences of my life. Yes, floppy disks. Yeah, no, really, three and a half inch floppy disks. I had stickers made. I had, I bought like 500 different, 500 bubble mailers. I had all these like floppy disks ready to go. And I only sold like two copies of the game in a year. And I was like, what am I going to do with all these bubble mailers? I think I still have a copy of that game on a floppy disk somewhere in all my memorabilia somewhere. I don't know where it is, but, um, yeah, so my so my second experience working with the publisher was really horrible. The publisher I had basically just sold my game to another publisher. The the bigger publisher took 90% of all profit and my other publisher took 50% of that. So I only got like 5% of profit. And then he got in these legal battles and used all the money from the game to fight his his own legal battles which was crazy bad it was just a horrible experience and i ah but anyways so i got super screwed with the, with that game and i thought man i don't ever want to really want to make games again you know and i was like what am i uh pff, maybe i'll just make music so i literally spent like almost a decade making music and thinking i wanted to succeed in the music business and all that but then in the 2000s i got back in and i got some faith I thought, man, I'm going to try and do this on my own again. I'm trying to make a video game. And that's what gave birth to Songbringer. So I'm glad I glad I started moving down that road again. But anyways, so working, this the third publisher experience was the publisher experience that redeemed my faith in publishers. Um, this publisher, Double Eleven, has been amazingly good to me. Like, beyond good. Like, almost like unfair from their perspective, how well they've treated me. So, um, I, I, to be honest, like I can't even see a day where I wouldn't want to work with double 11 in the future. I'm working with double 11 on this project, um, for the moment. And, uh, we'll see how that all goes and stuff like that. And, uh, I've, I can't like, like, like I said, I want to work with them as long as I possibly can. Cause I love them. They're all amazing people. They've treated me incredible. They've supported me so much and uh, they're awesome. So yes, there are some really, really good indie focused publishers out there these days. Dami Killer, what's up? Yeah, you follow, yeah, the Double Eleven guys are pretty cool for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? That, and that's one of the coolest things like about Double Eleven is this, is like they've, They've always taught they've they've said this over and over and over that money doesn't matter, only people matter. And that is like if that doesn't like restore your faith in humanity, like I don't know, I don't know what what would. And 
and I, and they really believe it, you know, and they've taught me that. And, and now I'm like, whoa, I really believe that too. It's like money really doesn't matter. It's just paper. It comes in, it goes out, but people matter. You got a publisher for your game? Nice, scissor. Right on, man. What's up, Bakras? What's up, Alone Rhapsody? You wish Blizzard would learn that? What? Okay, so what did Blizzard do that, that makes you say that? I can't... I haven't been following exact details. I've, I know they just had BlizzCon. I know they've, like, been toying with announcing Pub Diablo 4. Yes, it's such a win-win proposition. You're, that's a good word, like phrase for it, is business acumen. Like f realizing that all of business is basically just people in the end. And if you're not, if you're not good to people, your business will falter. Cell phone Diablo? No way. <laughs> no way. Is that really what they've been doing? Oh, so they really are. They're doing a, the cell phone, ver like an iPhone version? With Fortnite graphics? No, you can't just change Diablo and go Fortnite-y on it. Wow. Oh, they really did. Wow. Wow, totally. Everybody was expecting Diablo 4. They're like, hey, pff, come on, when's Diablo 4? You guys have been hinting at it forever. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's crazy. Oh, and they're not even producing it? Yeah, that's right. They were they were also talking about that Diablo 2 remastered. That's right. Huh. Whoa. Oh, is that um what's that Chinese publisher? Uh something 10 10 cent. Is that what is that who it is? It's doing it. 10 cent. Okay, so Diablo, it's called Diablo Immortal and it's a mobile game and it's a rescan of some other game? What are they doing with their franchise? Wow, WC3 remake? Now that something sounds pretty interesting. Oh, Netties, worse than Tencent. Dang. Dang, man. So mental, what's up? You haven't claimed your pledge reward key yet? What? You gotta you gotta email me. I'm not at wizardfoo.com. Let me write that down. Nat at wizardfoo.com. I'll leave that up here for you a second. Ten cents mostly a holdings company. I've heard ten cent is like rolling in the dough like they like roll out red carpets for their developers and spend millions of dollars treating their developers and stuff what tencent owns part of blizzard now gosh everything is changing <laughs> man oh The link still worked? Oh, you mean, oh, okay, great. Safe. Awesome, so mental. Cool, so you already had a link, you just had to follow it, gotcha. Yeah. To anybody else watching this stream, if you're, or this video on YouTube, if you have not claimed your Songbringer key, it probably is still there waiting for you. Um, I sent out those emails back when Songbringer got released. But Humble is pretty good about uh, that, so you should just be able to hop on Humble's page, claim it, get your key, put it into Steam. The WC3 remake looks cool, huh? Yes, I know, yeah. The people that made Blizzard great mostly have left now, from what I heard. Yeah. 
I'm actually pretty impressed, though. Diablo 3 uh, it was the last Blizzard game I played. I played StarCraft 2 a little bit, but Diablo 3 really impressed me. But this was I played it years after it was released. and But I liked it. It was pretty good. Nettle Flap, yes, new game. Let me just let me just rant about what it is again. Yeah. Yeah, dang. <laughs> Boogie took all the keys. Nobody gets any more keys. So Nettle Flap, yes, I'm making a new game. It's called Low Dragger. And it's a five on five creative arena combat game. So basically, your goal at, you, as your team of the 5-on-5 five five is to go steal the other team's lodestone, drag it back to your base. It's basically like Capture the Flag. It's creative because you get to carve out your lanes each match. So your whole arena is full of trees. You chop down the trees to carve the lanes. And you use the trees to build to for wood, which you can actually build buildings with. So that's another part of the creative thing. You can build towers and other buildings that help you enable different roles. That's another part of the creative thing is that there's different roles, there's like eight roles, and you can switch between them during the match. So there's like a builder, there's the lumberjack, there's the knight, there's an archer, there's a mage, there's a healer, there's a spy role, I forgot to mention the spy role earlier, there's um, a bomber, there's an assassin, and all these different roles, but you can basically just change your role at runtime by buying a different weapon, and you have that different weapon, and now you're you can play differently, basically. So it's creative five on five. Yeah, I heard that too. I heard Diablo three was really horrible at release, but they fixed a lot of it. And luckily, I played it after they fixed it all, which was really cool. A uh, scissor? No, there's no gameplay footage yet. <laughs> there's a, yeah, there's a lot of glitches I can show you, but uh, let me show you what I do have going so far. It's like I'm basically just starting this voxel engine, right? So it won't be this zoomed in, um, but it'll be it'll be isometric like this and voxely. Five different players on each team, um, dynamic shadows. So it it'll all look a lot better in the end. It might I might actually change from this. 3D voxely look to to actually just basically going back to a really small frame buffer like Songbringer, where basically each one of these voxels would correspond to a pixel exactly. So it would basically be like Songbringer's art, but 3D. It would be perfectly 3D. So the trees will cast shadows, the players cast shadows, and all that stuff. So I'm pretty excited about creating this in this game in 3D because it can really do some artistic things that Songbringer couldn't being a 2D game. So there's really not much to show here. It's just I'm just messing around with the voxel engine and it's horrible, horrible frame rate right now. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassingly slow. Tadat, what's up? You mafia town? Town of Salem? Yeah, three full 3D. Yeah, yes, it's it does have that kind of vibe, and actually, it's partially inspired by the Diablo series, where you can. Oh, so that's another cool thing is where you basically get to customize your character when you first start, so you can change your skin color, your looks, your whatever, and then you also get pieces of armor. So like you get your like different like arm, uh, shoulder armor, you know, helmet, those kinds of things that will which will change the look of your character. Each one of them layer together. So you might have different shoulder, different head, all that kind of stuff. And each one of those gives you different stats and boosts and stuff like that. So that should be fun too. <laughs> Reminds you of Sonic 3D? I, for real? Have I discovered sitting? Yes. Yes, I have. I, I like standing. And I, oh, so that's kind of cool. I have this monitor arm thing right now. Where it's I'm I'm in a van right now I'm actually in a, in a van that I'm I'm building as my home sort of right now and the the uh, the I have this monitor arm on the wall where I can move my laptop up and down so I can stand but I haven't yet which is weird right I used to stand all the time yeah yes magic of voxel is pretty cool it's the one one part about um. Yeah, animation is pretty cool in this 3D because let me show you what I mean. 
Like, uh, here's like the running animation for Rock right here. And of course, in the end, you won't be playing as Rock in this game. You'll be playing as your own customizable character. But for now, I just wanted to kind of like get things going by having an art character that I wanted. The one hard part about Magic of Voxel is that you can't really animate. You have to go create a separate model for each frame. Uh, but but it works. And what, what's nice about it, though, is that you don't have to... Like in 2D pixel art, you have to create separate animations for all those different directions that you're walking in, which takes forever. But this, you only have to create one animation. So that's pretty cool. Was I learning voxels all this time? No, I've just started this in the last couple months. What's up, Akuris? Um, you know, I'm sending... The voxel engine sends stuff to the GPU. Um, it's really, uh, really just in the works right now. It's super slow. I haven't got things working that well, but yeah, it does a lot. It does some of the stuff in CPU, like the dynamic shadows and things like that, and then sends the rest of the GPU. I've really got to work on this. I'm running into some huge limitations with, with what I'm going for is a voxel engine with tons of voxels, you know, so it almost looks like 2d pixel art. And what's, what slows that down is that each one of those has like 12, 12 vertices at minimum. And like, and it just takes forever to draw it all. And then occlude, occlusion is huge thing that takes a lot of time. So anyways, I've really got some things to figure out as far as this voxel engine goes. But like I said, what I'm going for eventually is a 3D voxel engine where every voxel corresponds to a pixel. So it will look like a 2D pixel art game in the end, but it will actually be fully 3D with 3D shadows and all that kind of stuff. Pathway? Uh, wait, wait, which one's Pathway again? Oh, I just saw Metroid Curved in, on Twitter and it looks dope. That's so cool. Yes, I'm in a van. Uh, am I going to make it playable locally? Um, the, yes, the plans are to make it locally. I haven't figured out how to do that yet, but definitely online. This is a fully online five on five multiplayer game. That's the main focus of this is the online multiplayer, uh, locally. I'm not sure how that would work just yet. Maybe you have to log in and then, I don't know, maybe you could play over Bluetooth or maybe just local LAN. I'm not sure. Salad dogs, you added four monitor arms to your desk. Awesome. Oh man, I would love to see a picture of that. Yes, austerity. Yeah, I'm austerity. I'm a pretty austere person, I guess. You prefer low res text pixel art tech? Yeah, that's pretty cool. What's neat about this voxel engine is there's no textures. So I thought that would really optimize things, but it hasn't really yet. Even even though there's no textures, trying to draw that many voxels is a really hard thing for a GPU. Or, well, no, most of the slowdown issues I'm experiencing are because I'm doing some things in CPU. So, anyways, I'll get through that. R2 Robot Custom Engine? Uh, somewhat. So I started writing this uh, game with something called KitFu. It's something I'm creating right now where it's an, a game engine wrapper layer where underneath my wrapper layer, I can switch out the game engine. So right now I'm using Cocos 2DX, but I eventually want to switch that to Double Eleven's engine. In fact, when I first started this all, I had it running on Double Engine's engine, sort of, and uh, but there were a few little issues. So anyways, once, the, once I can get those issues solved, I'm going to switch that to Double Eleven's engine. Um, because their engine works on consoles and all that kind of stuff. Um, but anyways, what I'll basically be mostly working with is my game wrapper layer called KitFu. And what's great about that is that the next game I write, I can use KitFu again and again and again. KitFu can be something I can use for the rest of my life as far as, like, it's just sort of like my, it's just a, it's a layer that makes me never have to learn another game engine again, basically. Starmancer. Sounds like a cool game. Have I considered using an existing engine? Uh, no. I, yeah, well, yes, I have considered it, and 
chosen not to. Um, I Unity is slow. Unity is uh, oh, it's slow to develop with, I think, and it's also slow. Well, uh, it totally depends on who you are and what you're doing. But anyways, I think Unity is super resource hoggy and like slow when it runs on most like almost every single unity game i play causes my laptop to just sound like it's on fire the fans are running the whole time i'm not trying to hate on unity or whatever i think actually think it's a great tool and in fact i used unity to do a prototype mock-up of this 3d world to see if it was even going to work so anyways unity is a great tool but i choose to write games in my own type of engines because i in the end, I, I can get a game that runs much faster without Unity. At least in my personal opinion. And I don't like using software to make a game. I'd rather be coding and stuff here in my, my Vim terminal, terminal and all that. Yeah, 2D on 3D. Oh, Robotality's new game? Oh, really? Oh, I got to check that out. Actually, let me pull up a screenshot or two of it right now. Lighter Thief, catch you later, man. Good chatting with you again. Oh, and the tra the trailer's really good too, huh? Oh wow, Game Maker Two has a thing where you can compile in real time. That's neat. Preach, preach it. Unity. Oh, look at this. Oh, right. Pathway. Of course. I've seen this one. Yes. Okay. I know I've, I remember the developer talking about how they do this and it's actually 2d on 3d. It's not a full 3d engine, but yeah, this is the cool looking pixel art 3d ish. They, they, they've done some really cool tricks to basically make this seem like it's fully 3d. Oh, how to do local multiplayer? It's tough to get fire people. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. Oh, that was a joke. Oh. No, I actually think local multiplayer could work if you do split screen, but you need to have multiple screens. So, but yeah, it's something I need, really need to think about, right? How the heck would you pull off local multiplayer for a five-on-five -five game? Unity now offers... A new ECS model? Yes, I love ECS-based game dev too, my friend. Oh. I gotta check this game out some more again. Yeah, I remember I remember when they first started Pathway. They're still working on performance? Cool. Well, that's good to hear. That is really good to hear. That's like... If Unity can just increase their performance and do some more optimizations, like so many other games would run better. Hey, Boogie, see you, man. Good chatting with you. Later, bro. You're using a custom engine because you wanted to learn how to make one. Isn't that fun? I know it is a bad idea for making a game. Yeah. That's why I'm not I'm not actually writing my whole own game engine. I'm basically just writing a game engine wrapper layer. Well, it's already written where uh, this game engine wrapper layer just uses another game engine underneath it. So it's kind of like I'm using my own custom engine, but I'm not, which gives me the benefit of being able to make a game, but also gives me the benefit of sort of using my own interface to a game engine, which what can I show you that is like uh, that would is so an example of that. I guess V three. I don't know. Here's vec. Here's this is the vector three class, 
Every the whole point of Kit Fu, one other point of Kit Fu besides the game engine wrapper layery thing is to make it compile super duper fast. And this thing compiles super duper fast. When I'm not streaming, each one of these source files in my game compiles in like 0.1 seconds or something like that. Compared to Songbringer, it would take like one, two, three seconds to compile each CPP file. So just by simply, just by simply like only using um, four declarations and things like that and headers and not using any of the ST, C++ STL, you can get a, you can compile so much faster. The main slowdown for C++ compilation is the templates. Ugh. So you, you basically, I considered writing this whole game in C instead of C++ because I was so pissed off at how slow C++ compiled. But I found out that it's not C++, it's the freaking STL. Yeah. Pathway looks like a sweet game. Yes, definitely thought of, think, keep those separate. A game engine versus a game. Nice. Yeah, definitely try it. So what's the what's their uh what's new about the ECS and the new Unity? Ask your comments. Yes, definitely. I love ASCII art. The objective of DirectX. What you wait? What you mean by that, Mala? Yes, Massey. I really wanted to write my new game in John Blow's new language, but he hasn't released it yet. At least that I'm aware of. Has he? If he's actually released it, that would be super cool. But from what I understand, his his goal is to finish the game he's writing with this new language before he ever releases it. Yeah, Zeth, he's not. What's up, Zeth? Dude, what's up? Yeah, I would have loved to make my next game in in uh, Jai. It looks so good. I'm really looking forward to John Blow's new game. But I guess the next game will have to be in that. Yeah. Hey, right, cool, Nettle Flap. Cheers, man. Oh, he is doing a small closed beta as well. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. All the the compilation speed, the improvements on the C-based languages, the uh, uh, um, being able to do things at compile time, like a lot of the stuff about Jai is <laughs> it's like programmer candy. Cool, Mala. Good chatting with you. I should, right? I should try and get into that, huh? He should be, yeah. He should pay me to be a part of his beta. <laughs> no, really, man. That's actually a good idea. Maybe I should. Yeah. I I totally respect John Blow. He's got like a he's got a good brain. <laughs> I respect his brain. <laughs> and the games he's made, of course. And the team he's built and the uh, the following he has and all that kind of stuff. I respect him. Should we draw some stuff? Let's draw let's, let's get some magic of voxel open here and start drawing some things. I basically when I drew this these first original characters, it's like all I did was I took the 2D pixel art and then um, made it 3D. It's pretty simple. So let's grab some trees. Let's just open up some trees. And start making them 3D. Uh, right, so. Go to Songbringers folder, find some trees, and just have some fun making some trees for a little bit. 
that's going to be in sheets. I think I put them all the trees in shadow. Yeah, because they had shadows. At one point, the shader I had for Songbringer had to separate things into this has shadows, this doesn't have shadows. Eventually, I found an optimization later where nothing had to have shadows. Okay, there we go. Some trees. Oh, this is the part. All right, right, right. So, oh, yeah, I had different bottoms to the trees so that I could change. <laughs> so I forgot about the dinosaur. <laughs> oh, was that Boogie? No, that was, um, dude, what? Oh, forget who did that. Okay, so let's grab one of these bare trees and we'll put some leaves on and stuff too. Actually, maybe, maybe we should combine these before trying to throw it into Magic of Oxel. Oh. Okay, looks good. I think this might even be able to just drag and drop. I did it the hard way at first. I actually had a picture of my rock image or whatever up. And then I 3D voxeled it all. But later I found out you can just drag ping files into Magic of Voxel. Ping. Here we go. Tree bear. All right. Nice, it worked. Oh, let's do let's do that again though. I want to do a new and open up the color palette for low dragger, and then drag this in. Oh, it was the same thing. Anyways, this will work. Okay, so what we have so far is a flat two D tree. Let's start making it 3D. Okay, so we have a um, uh, dim the dimensions of this world. I guess what you call this is 52 by 70. Let's make that 52 by 52 by 70. And let's start extruding some of these faces. So in Magic of Voxel, if you've never used it, these different brushes basically give you different abilities in your 3D world. L is to create a line. V is to, is to add a voxel or erase a voxel at a time. F is your face brush. B is the uh, a box. I think it's a box. P is for patterns, C is for circles. I really only use the V and F ones myself. So it's kind of, you can basically take some of these faces and just attach. Oops. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna sample this color and then attach. There we go.
So now this tree is starting to get a little bit more 3D. Um, and I've got some keyboard shortcuts that I basically have swizzled up for um, my own liking. Basically, if I press the A key, it allows me to attach a voxel. Um, the S key allows me to paint a voxel. The C key allows me to, like, sample a color. Magic of Voxel has their own shortcuts for all that kind of stuff, but I've used this thing called Carabiner which is, yeah, it's this app which can change all your keyboards, keyboard shortcuts to whatever you want for any app. Yeah, ta-da! Thank you. All right, man. Cheers. So let's keep on making this more circular. Whoops. Oops. I painted those the wrong color. Let's get those out like that. Slowly but surely, this is turning into a 3D model. It's you, Sarah. What's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm good, man. Yep. Just streaming the announcement for the new game. Um, it's bit. It's uh, the new game is called Low Dragger. I think you were on the stream the other last week uh but yeah it's called low dragger your goal it's a five on five multiplayer game real time online and you're it's creative so the creative part is that you basically can change your roles at uh while you're playing so you can be like a builder um a lumberjack an archer mage fighter healer all these different things you can change which one you are at any point in the match you get to carve out your lanes too, so the, the the arena is full of trees, and then you eventually you car you chop down the trees to carve out your lanes. And another thing is that you can build towers, so it's sort of like like a creative multiplayer five on five game. Yeah, man, I'm excited to make it. I'm excited to make a multiplayer project. Um, uh, just to kind of like, it's nice to have a little bit of a break from, uh, doing single player, you know, like Songbringer, um, because I spent like three and a half years making that game. It's kind of, it's nice to have like a different kind of project for a little while, but eventually I do want to go back and do Songbringer 2 and that kind of stuff. But for now, 
this creative multiplayer game. How have you been, man? What's what's new since we last talked? Hackspore, what's up, man? Howdy. It's nice to have some people jumping on the stream so I can uh, restate what this new game is about. For now, yes, for now this is based on Code Coast 2DX, but uh, I've sort of, I'm transitioning away from that um, by creating a game engine wrapper layer. It's called KitFu, and it's basically something that allows me to switch which engine I'm using. So underneath KitFu is Code Coast 2DX right now, but eventually I can swap in a different engine. I want to swap in Double Eleven's engine because it runs on console and all that kind of stuff. Um, so KitFu is kind of like my, um, it makes everything just the way I want it to be for a vi making video games. It also compiles extremely fast because it uses all these super minimal headers um, and is uh, and the rest of it's pre-compiled into libraries. And um, yeah, so super fast compilation and uh, can swap the game engine. And so KitFu is, 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 Awesome. I've been dreaming of making it for a long time. I'm glad I'm finally doing it. Yeah. Grinding the dev dream, yeah? Yeah, I mean... Coco Studio X has been a it's been a real good uh, thing for me uh, because it's like you know it's C plus plus and you can you can change any of it you want but it's nice to be transitioning away from it because it's just getting more and more and more bloated <laughs> and I and I've always wanted a way to use a game engine where I didn't all have to like uh I didn't have to deal with all that bloat you know you moved to China. Wow, man. What you doing there? Nests. What's up, man? Hello. Howdy. This is the new game announcement live stream. Okay. All right. How has it been so far? Kavarni. Hey, man. How's it going? It's been a while since we chatted. Yeah, they have really focused on that. The last, like, um, um, gosh, the last, like, three or four years, it's all been about Coco's Creator this and Coco's Creator that, which is great for, like, like small mobile projects, you know, small games. I don't know, but I, I really, really prefer to make all my own games on uh, in the command line with my own editor, and my own setup, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it might be. It might be dropping some frames. Let me check it out. Is anybody else having any trouble with the... Oh, yeah, no. Oh, it might be. I just saw it go red. Oh, yellow. Dang. Oh no, what's going on with my internet? Maybe I'm down a couple bars or something right now. 
I had to be live streaming on a 4G connection because I can't find good Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, man. My life's kind of crazy right now. But I'm glad to be making games. Yeah. It's command line. What'd you miss? Oh, so I'm, I'm announcing the new game today. Dang. Dang. You know, I'm, not, I'm in a city right now where the, the, this, what do you call it? The cell phone, the, the bars. I don't have good bars right now. But I have a cell phone booster. Yeah, yeah we're just working on a tree right now. Yeah, um, so what did you miss so far today? I'm announcing the new game. This is game is called Low Dragger, and it's creative five-on-five -five arena combat. Um, it's creative because you can you carve out your lanes each match. You um, can change roles during the match. There's like a, a builder, a lumberjack, a fighter, archer, mages, bombers, spies, all these different roles you can be. You can change while you're playing. And um, you can build towers. And so your goal is to go steal the other team's lodestone and drag it slowly back to your base and hope you don't die. <laughs> so, um, and there will also be a battle royale mode. So instead of being on a five-on-five -five team, you can everybody gets on their own team, basically, and whoever um, lasts the longest wins. There's no sight about the game. There's no key art image there's nothing yet i just started this game so like well i started it two months ago but i had to get a lot of like engine work started already yes so you can change the map dynamically so there's oh and there's also two parts to the map there's the overworld where there's trees and you're each team's base right and there'll probably be like a river dividing the map um, but then there's also the underworld. So you can go in the caves and go underneath the ground and blow up rocks to get to the other. There's two caves. One's, one's near your base and one's near the other team's base. So you basically can go underground, blow up some rocks, and appear on the other team's area that way. So there's two ways to get to the other team. And that kind of makes it creative, too, because like you can. it's a different it's a different map each time you know you're gonna carve out those lanes by chopping down those trees and blowing up the rocks and all that kind of stuff so it'll change the way each match plays hopefully hopefully that's a really fun thing it sounds fun to me and i hope it's i hope it turns out to be fun flood the underworld by diverting the river oh there's so many ideas yes there's so many ideas that could go with this. Flood the rats. The rats must be destroyed. Boston Mass, how big of a map? I think the, about the same size as a, like a MOBA map, like a, like a, you know, League of Legends or Dota. About that size. Zyger, what's up, man? Hey guys. Yep. So that's kind of what that's what low dragger is in concept. It's gonna be a few years before it's all playable. No, I, I take that back. It'll probably be about a year before it's alpha. So you'll be able to play it soon enough. And because it's a multiplayer game, it's this is gonna be the kind of thing where I. Like Songbringer, I had to I had to keep it kind of like in house until it got to really really polished phase. But because this is a multiplayer game, this has to be shared with people way sooner. Like I've got to I like get people playing it, give me feedback, you know, like let's see how fun it is. And of course, it requires ten players to be able to have a match. So this is gonna be in your hands sooner than Songbringer was. I have I have nothing really signed up yet. Nice man. Yes. Uh, the, all I've got so far is this voxel engine I'm working on. 
There's really not much to show. It's a horrible frame rate and everything, but you can kind of get the concept. It's not going to be this zoomed in, but it'll be something like this, where it'll be a voxel engine, and imagine five different players on each team in this arena, sort of at this perspective, this isometric perspective. And what, what I'm hoping I can accomplish, I'm not sure if this is even visually possible yet, but I hope to accomplish something where each voxel corresponds to a pixel. So it will look like Songbringer, the 2D pixel art, but will actually be fully 3D with 3D shadows and all that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping I can pull this all off. It's kind of a challenge, to tell you the truth. It's a real challenge for me. Yes, and there will be a Battle Royale mode, too. When When's that? <laughs> yeah. And it's pretty simple to implement because once you've got this whole mechanics for all like the 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 multiplayer arena combat part, it's really not much different to add battle royale. Yep, so that's the concept. That is the concept for Low Dragger. Man, it's good to be chatting with y'all. I was in Thailand for a little while. It was um, uh, it wasn't as easy to stream over there, but now I'm back and it's it's a little bit easier to stream. What's weird though is the internet I get in the United States is not as good as the internet in Thailand, which is weird because you'd think that in Thailand you'd get worse internet. You're from Bangkok? Sweet. Oh, I was in Bangkok for uh, like a couple weeks here and there. What brought me to Thailand? Um, it was a, it's a kind of a sad story. My, my woman and I parted ways. And so I was really just like lost and distraught and had to go somewhere. You know, so I thought, Let me, I'll just go to Thailand. Maybe that'll make me happy. And it did. It was a good ref refreshing time. And uh, now I'm back in the United States. I'm actually streaming to you in a van. <laughs> load dragger. Yeah, it's well, it's load like load ragger. But yeah, it, Rock will not be a playable character because you'll be able to customize your character completely. So you start off by creating a character. You change the skin color and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and then you can also get different pieces of armor. So like you can get like a different helmet, different shoulder pads and breastplate and all that kind of stuff, which will change the look of your character and it can all be layered differently. So you might have it, this one character might have these shoulders and those shoulders and whatever. And so you get basically like, you kind of get like a, it's almost like Diablo where Diablo has the loot and you can put things in your inventory. It'll be like that where you have different pieces of armor that you can wear. Yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah, I had to. I, I did. No, it, it's really, it's really like, uh, uh, it wasn't that bad. It was a good learning experience. Now I'm, now I'm healed, and uh, and you know, um, yeah, just, I'm looking forward to uh, love again at some point. Getting, I'm just trying to move myself forward to be ready for it, you know? So, yeah, you could you could make a character that looks like Rock if you want, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about that part, too. And another thing about this is that it's going to have a, a hub world. So instead of like, you know, most most of these multiplayer games that are five on five, you enter into the game and you're in like a, a meta game. You're basically in a meta game where you're just in a set of menus. You're like, okay, let me join a match. Okay, let me apply some stuff to my character. You're in the you're in the meta game. 
But this is going to be a hub world. So everything you would do in a metagame and other multiplayer games like this, you do in a hub world. So you, do, you physically actually do stuff. So you go to an armorer to buy armor. You go to another dude that helps you sign up for matches. If you're, if you're waiting for a match, you're actually waiting in line. You know what I mean? You can see other characters that are around you. There should be a rare helmet that looks like Jib. Oh, best idea. Best idea that's ever been ideated. Yeah. Agreed. Done. Consider it done. Nice one. Nice one, Salad Dogs. That's you. Time Memorial shall remember you for this idea. Is it immemorial even a word? Is that real? Am I just making stuff up? Oops. Yeah, so drawing things in 3D like this, creating these art pieces takes a little bit it takes a, a lot longer than creating 2d art but what the, what the real benefit of creating things in 3d is that um you only have to animate it once you don't have to like draw four different animations for each different direction it is a word immemorial it's a word so let's go ahead and get crazy and draw things in a big sphere or delete things in a big sphere yeah since time immemorial not not four time immemorial all right so I basically what I did here is I selected the voxel brush and changed the sphere mode and made it four so that I can go and just carve out bits of this tree like this. I'm still trying to get the whole style of 3D art down too. Like 2D pixel art was one thing, right? It's um, you can create certain looks and um, there's certain benefits to 2D pixel art. And then with 3D art, it's a little bit different because like for example, with 2D pixel art, you have, you have to change the color of each pixel to sort of give you the feeling that it's 3D. So for example, you, the edge of your character might have a little bit of a darker um, color to sort of indicate that that is the edge of the character. But with 3D art, you really don't have to do that. You can kind of use the same color because it's got all this 3D shading already built into it. So I'm still kind of getting used to this whole 3D art thing. And uh, you, as you can tell, like this tree is <laughs> not exactly beautiful. Not yet. So I'm still learning the tricks of the trade, you can say, when it comes to 3D 3D voxel art. But this tree is, you know, starting to look more like a tree. Okay, but it's not from that angle. It's a little bit better. Still got some holes here. Let's fill some of these in. Or wait, no, let's finish. Finish carbon this side here. That's it. Carbon, just like a turkey. So, like, this tree took me, I don't know, what, 15 minutes to draw in pixel art? It might take me 45 minutes to draw this in 3D, but. 
once it's 3D, I mean, you got it's a lot of benefits to once it's done in 3D. Oops. Face attach. I mean, it's not too bad, I would say. Not too bad looking. I wonder how this will look in the game. In fact, shoot, let's just throw this in. I haven't even saved this yet. <laughs> it would be a good thing to save this. Yeah, let's save it. Wow, I was able to type tree. Call this tree A. Zero. Let's see how that looks. We need, um, let's make a little. So, um, I'm still using the entity component system that I wrote for Songbringer, it's called Entity Foo. I'm always gonna use an Entity Component System for every game I ever write again. Love Entity Component Systems. So basically, I've got, uh, in this data folder, I've got different entities. I've got four of them already. Four entities! Gosh, Songbringer had hundreds. So we'll get there, we'll get there eventually. So I'm gonna copy origin to uh, tree And let's open that up. Let's make this so this is the oops. What did I even type there? Tree A zero. Scale scale one. No weirdness with the Z. Any, okay, anything else we need to do? Oh yeah, we should probably put an initial position for that. Oh no, we can just do that in the code. Okay, so let's go to the systems and we'll add this tree in. Kind of like the origin. This is all super hacky code right here right now because I haven't really got the arena all tight yet. Eves, what's up? How you doing? It has been a long time. How have you been? This is the, the new game announcement live stream. Tree. Text. And oh we do need to we do need a position, huh? Alright, fine. Position. Initial position. Uh where do I want this? I want it like behind the player, which means like like about like that. It's oh yeah. So this is the whole announcement stream right now. I'm announcing it. I've been in, I've been, I've kind of like re-announced it a bunch on this live stream um, because that's just you know how it is. Some people join here, some people join there. So I'm kind of just stating it over and over and over. Um, uh, but the new game is called Low Dragger, 
load as in load stone, L-O-D-E, and your goal, it's a five on five multiplayer game that's creative. And what I mean by creative is that you can, you get to carve out your lanes for each match um, by chopping down trees. And you chop down trees when you're one of the roles called the lumberjack. There's eight different roles and you can switch between the roles during the match. So you've got the lumberjack, you've got a builder which can build towers and buildings and other kinds of stuff, which is another creative part. So you can like build towers here and there and there's elemental towers and there's fake towers and there's like bridges and all these other stuff so you can build. And then there's other roles. So there's like a, um, there's the lumberjack, the builder, the archer, the mage, the fighter, the, uh, there's a spy role which can like infiltrate the, uh, the enemy lines. There's an assassin, there's a healer and all these things that you can be. Um, as part of your team. So that's kind of the concept right there. And you also get to customize your character. So like you start off, you can change your hair color and skin color and like make your character look like this and that. And then you, during, while you're fighting or from, from fighting different matches, you get different pieces of armor. So there's like shoulder armor, there's helmet armor, there's different pieces of armor and you can mix and match them all together. So your character will look different each time. Inspector role. Building's not approved. Get disabled. <laughs> Greenpeace activist role. Uh, so much that can so much that can be done here. Inspector role. So, yeah, building permit issuer role. Sorry, you can't build here. This your building. You're not up to code. You can't build that tower right there. <laughs> Your wiring is just all over the place. You're going to start a fire. It's not safe. Hey, check it out. The tree is here. And it even has a shadow. That's pretty cool. It's clipped off the top because I've, I've clipped the number of voxels that can be in there at one time. Let's put it a little bit more like or like this. It's kind of neat though to see something in 3D that fast. You gotta find him to buy a permit. You're like, yeah, I want to build a tower here. Okay, submit your submit your permit. All right, two weeks later, match is over, but you can get build a building. You're cool. This is, you know what? This is pretty satisfying. I like seeing this. I just been drawing this tree, and there it is in 3D with shadows and stuff. Eventually, this is going to be a cool-looking game. So far, it has got a long ways to go. Yeah, yeah. So it's basically just... It's basically just like... Creative arena combat. I can't really put it any other way. But yeah, once you, once the game like is something visual that you can see and like the game is working and it's playable and all that, it'll be a lot easier to describe it because you'll be able to see at a glance like, oh, that's what it is. Um, the framework engine I'm using uh, is, well, I'm using Cocos 2DX still underneath the hood, but I'm, I've written a layer on top of Cocos 2DX called KitFu which allows me to switch later. Like if I want to just stop using Cocos 2DX, which I will do pretty soon, um, swap in a different engine, I can do that. And also it compiles hella fast because it uses minimal headers and compiles all of its CPP files to a library that's pre-compiled. So that basically the code files for Lodragger are compiled super duper fast. Like we're talking a tenth of how fast it I could compile Songbringer. So I'm really excited about KitFu and it's been a great thing so far. And I'm still using an entity component system, the same one, Entity Foo. So that's pretty neat. And a lot of the code that I wrote for Songbringer is kind of, you know, I can kind of like pull that over and use it for KitFu. Like there's some things you just don't need to write twice, like a controller interfaces for your game pads and like, basic platform implementation stuff like file systems and things like that. It's load dragger, like lodestone load dragger. Sounds like low dragger, but it's load ragger. 
Yeah. I kind of like the er ending as a theme for my video games because Songbringer, Low Dragger, something else er, <laughs> eventually. I know we had, we had like so many live streams where we talked about Two words I've never heard. Nice. Marketize that up? How would you suggest marketizing it up? I know. I know, right? Yeah. I kind of want... I. Uh, are you talking about like that's not... That's not like easy to, to, to be word of mouth? I am kind of worried about it. Button masher. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, Songbringer's a yeah. It's a pretty good name, except the one the one downside to Songbringer was that it's it made people think it was a music game. Like when I was at uh... oh yeah, you can't misspell. Sounds epic is short. To totally get you. I am kind of worried about the name Low Dragger. I gotta admit, but yeah. So that's that was the one problem with Songbringer was that like it at conferences like at PAX East for example I would say oh the game's called Songbringer like oh sweet it's a music game right I'm like no it's not a music game <laughs> so that was it's like you can't really get the perfect name Turticus Burgicus Howdy Let's return to drawing this tree for a little bit. Should we draw the back half or just leave it totally flat? I know, it totally depends on the audience. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Let's attach some faces. Yeah, right. There's more important stuff to do. Yeah. Yeah. I think in the in the end like it's it really matters more the content of the game than the name of the game. You know, if the game's fun, it's going to spread, word of mouth is going to spread it no matter what the name is. Like Nidhog, for example. How do you spell Nidhog? I don't even remember. But Nidhog is a game that I will remember for the rest of my life and I'll share with other friends because it's awesome. Yeah. Yo, what's up, Alessandro? How you doing, man? Yo. So nice to be reconnecting with a lot of y'all. Yeah, new game. Mm-hmm. Mamma mia. Yeah, how have you been? How have you been? Ragger, a toy for dogs resembling interwined strands of rope? Yes, that is... Th it's going in the dictionary. That's like when you look at someone and say, that guy's name is probably Steve. And it is. Working, suffering, and waiting for your next game. Oh, man. Oh, all those sound like... Oh. Well, dude, man, it's good to be, it's good to be chatting with you. Yeah, so this is a 3D project. It's um it's a multiplayer game. It's called Low Dragger and it's basically creative 5 on 5 arena combat. So it's a 5 on 5 multiplayer game. 
and you can kind of think of it as Songbringer Battle Royale. There will actually be a Battle Royale mode. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited to make it. I've made multiplayer games before. They're hella hard to do. The coding part is crazy because you got to get everything super duper straight amongst many different computers. This computer's like, hey, I, I feel like it should be like this. And the other computer's like, ah, I've, uh. Oh, so it will be Songbringer Night. Thornbringer, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there will be that. It's more like Capture the Flag, though. So it's more like a, more like a MOBA in, in its, at the core of this game. Um, but there will be a Battle Royale mode. So yes, this will for now this is a solo mission. Um I'm uh my publisher is so awesome. Their their name is Double Eleven. Um I was talking about them earlier on the stream. But uh I they maybe at some point in this in this in this game we may bring on a few more people. I'm not sure at this point. But for now it's just me. But I'm totally open to adding people because this could be the kind of thing where uh, it requires a lot more people to get it finished. Like, especially when it comes to art, like adding all the armor I'm planning where you can where you can change your armor and you got different pieces of armor and stuff like that and every bit of it changes the way the character looks. That could be very time consuming to create all that art. So it might be necessary to bring somebody on. <laughs> I hate Fortnite. You do? Oh. Some people love it. Some people hate it. In Fallout 76, your movement speed is tied to your frame rate. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like one of the first things you definitely got to get straight when you make a multiplayer game where you want everything to be in sync. You got to tie it to your ticks, not your animation frame rate. Captain Pepperoni, what's up? Hello. Oops. So I'm currently drawing a 3D tree. Just a second ago, I threw this in the game, and it looked looked a lot better than it did here on in the art in Magic of Voxel, actually. Right now, it's looking pretty 2D and flat, but we're getting there. <laughs> Where? Oops. Okay, that's like almost finished extruding. Is this called extrusion? Am I, is that the right? Yeah, extrusion, right? Basically just taking a 2D piece of pixel art and making it 3D. Let's see a little more there. Okay, let's carve out a little bit of that. Car whoops, that's the paint I want to erase. Make this 3D-ish. This has been a challenge for me, actually, learning how to do 3D stuff. I guess that's why I chose it. I wanted a challenge. I was sorely tempted to keep on doing 2D pixel art games, but I've had this vision of making a 3D engine that looks like a 2D pixel art game but is actually completely 3D 
So I thought, you know what? It would be weak sauce of me to not try. But so the vision uh, artistically is to create an engine where it, uh, it looks like 2D pixel art, but it is th fully 3D. So my goal is to basically make this game look like it's sort of like Songbringer, but it's under the hood. It's fully 3D. We'll see if that can be pulled off. That's actually a challenge. I'm running into some limitations. Voxel engines are, they work pretty well, or I mean, from what I can tell so far, making one. Um, the, it's like easier if you have huge voxels like Minecraft, but if you have small voxels like this that I'm trying to go for, where a voxel would correspond to something like about the size of a pixel, it's really difficult because every single one of those has like 12 different vertices and there's all these triangles. You're, you're, you end up having like millions of vertices on the screen. Song your craft. Yeah. It's basically what it is. Yeah, that you'll be able to interact with stuff. So basically, um, there's there's like eight or ten different roles, right? You can be a lumberjack, you can be a builder, you can be an archer, uh, a knight, a mage, a healer, a spy, um, an assassin. And basically all these different roles you can switch during the match. All you have to do is buy a different weapon and that changes you to that different role. So during the match you can change roles. Like uh, for a second you're a lumberjack, you're chopping down trees, you're carving out the lane for your match. So basically at the start of the match, it's the whole arena is full of trees and you chop down the trees to carve out your map, your lanes. So each match is a little bit different because you've got these different lanes that are carved creatively. Like you, maybe one match you want your team's lane to be over here and one, one time you want it to be over there. Maybe one time you don't even chop down any trees because there's also an underworld where you can go into a cave you have to bomb through rocks, but then you can come up on the other side and come up on the other team's base, basically, through the caves. So you don't even have to chop down trees. So um, you want the postman roll? <laughs> right on. The postman. Yo, hey, I got your package here. Who wants a package? Package delivery for Alessandro. Porchetto. Yo, is anybody here named Alex? Got a delivery for you. Looks like some pizza. Nope, sorry, not pizza. Some socks. Whoa, hey, I just like... I just did the delete the whole uh, project command. That was great. Yeah, man, right? You're Alex, too. What's up? Oh, ha how many other Alexes do we have on here right now? Can I be Alex, too? I want to be... I want to switch my name to Alex. I'm tired of the name Nathaniel. I need, I need something like Alex. It's a very powerful name. It reminds me of Alexander the Great. Alexander the Fantastically Awesome.
All right, Hexpore. Yeah, thank you, man. Cheers. We'll chat with you later. All the hamsters are scared. They're running. Run away. Okay, let's make this look a little more like a tree. This looks, it looks really dirty to me when I see it all like this. But it can be all cleaned up later. I'm still getting to be used to making... 3D models. This is kind of a challenge for me, to tell you the truth. Okay, so let's... That's kind of like done for now. I just took this 2D tree and made it 3D. It's not awesome, but it's a start. And at least I can go in the game. Let's take a look at it. Let's see what it looks like in the game. Hopefully it looks better than it does there. Which it usually does. I'm, I'm quite often surprised when I look at the art in a game. In the game, it always seems to look a little better. There we go. We've kind of got a 3D tree going there. It gets chopped off because we, <laughs> we can only draw so many voxels. But uh, yeah, there you get the picture. That could be pretty cool. I can imagine some being a lumberjack and going over to that and being like, hey, let's chop that down. Bam, chop, chop, chop. And you, you know, you got some space, you can run around now. Hey, let's just get crazy and see if we can draw like a lot of trees. Let's see what happens. Did the stream crash again? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm phone. I'm on the phone right now. It's the best the best connection I can get. I've tried Wi-Fi. I don't ha I don't have a home to live in like most people do. I actually have a van. Uh so it's um this is the best internet I can get right now. So sorry sorry if we have inter intermittent issues. But I'll still be streaming at you. All right, let's see. Um, yeah, let's see what it looks like with these trees, like multiple of them. We'll do something like this where we're drawing. That's the multiple pieces of the ground. Let's do multiple trees. All right, all right. So if um, abs, yeah, I'm in Van. Where am I right now? I'm in California. I'm in uh, a town called Eureka. I'm on my way south towards the bay. So. I'm not in Thailand. Nope. Nope. I was in Thailand for a, the good, a good portion of the beginning of the year. It was very inexpensive and healing process for me. It was pretty awesome. I liked it. But uh, now I'm back because I miss my friends and family and, you know, I want to be, I want to be here. But it's very expensive to live in the United States. So hence the van. So let's continue if we've got like in the middle and then the rest of these, let's draw tree A0, render offset, uh, render anchor, oh, eh, position initial, that looks, okay, that looks good. Thanks, man. 
Okay, so I've just basically on this live stream, I've been announcing the new game, talking about it, what it is, and now I'm just playing around with creating a 3D tree and see if we can populate the arena with some trees. See how slow it's starting up. There's so many voxels it's trying to render right now. <laughs> this is probably gonna, if this even runs, it'll run at like one frame a second. In fact, I might be killing the stream here doing this. Shoot. I shouldn't have created that many trees. Oh. This is the this is the limitation that I'm running into creating a voxel engine. It is like it's oh, it's hard to get good performance when you have tiny voxels. Dang, this isn't even <laughs> Oh man, I might have to kill this. I hope that didn't kill the stream there. Looks like we're still streaming. Oh, that's good. Cool. Yeah, California is super expensive. Basically, my home is expensive. Even Oregon, where I'm from. Oregon is cheaper than California, but still, compared to other parts of the world, this is an expensive country. Let's see if we can just do one. We'll do like one row of trees. So y equals, let's do like y equals three. Y is less than three. Yeah, I am batching the voxels. It basically what I'm doing is I've I cry, like the limitation I'm running into is the the amount of vertices it takes to draw is huge. And so basically I have to buffer them all with OpenGL and then um and then when things move around, I have to change the buffer. So like when I if the camera move like I've got all these voxels buffered, right? Okay, and that that works, right? Somehow we got this all buffered and OpenGL can render it pretty fast. But as soon as the camera moves, now I'm like, okay, now I got to bring in these other voxels on the other side of the screen, get rid of those voxels because there's not enough room in the buffer because it's already using millions of vertices. So there's a lot of practical limitations I'm running into at the moment. But they shall be um, overcome, I'm sure, at some point. Yeah, parallelism. Yeah. Yeah, there's... there's. It's a, it's a really healthy challenge, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm enjoying it, I guess. No, I certainly am enjoying it. Okay, so let's go x negative 3 to positive 3. And we'll just get rid of this. Okay, so now we're creating way less trees, and the trees had tons of voxels, so that probably explains why it was taking forever to load. It does use a lot of CPU at this point, too, because the dynamic shadows, the, the shadow that the character casts, and the tree, things like that, that's all CPU. Oh, hey, cool. Yay, it worked. All right, so there's a bunch of trees in a row. That's cool. I actually like this. I'm finally getting the feeling that this is a place. Before it was more of an abstract concept, like here's a character. It's in an abstract world. Now I feel like I'm actually in the arena. Even though this voxel art is not great, it's, it leaves a lot to be desired. But hey, what do you expect when you're just brand new starting a video game? Huh? That's pretty cool. I'm I'm actually I'm actually proud of this. That's cool. Nice. All right. Well, let's see what time it is here. I have got to get. Holy crap! It's already four. I do have to get going. Yeah. Right. That's that's the part that I. I, once this all gets fast and the game is all running and stuff like that, this is going to be really neat once the the 3D shadows, the dynamic shadows and all that is going to be sweet. 
Yeah, the camera is too close right now because I only I was only focusing on the character earlier. We can easily change that real quick. How do I animate the voxels? The so that's like basically so far I'm writing it, it's all in Magic of Voxel. And with Magic of Voxel, there's no animation. I simply have to create separate models. So this is the zero. There's a model for one, two, three, four, five. Those are all different frames of that animation. They're all separate models. And oh, once these are um, once these are all finished creating these models, I do want to create an interpolation layer which can interpolate this voxel to that voxel. So if the game's running at like 60 frames a second, but my animations are only at 10 frames a second, the animations will smoothly move the voxels between the two. So that should be pretty neat too. That's an Another thing I hope I can pull off on this project. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work, but if you think about it, creating 2D pixel art is also a lot of work because you have to create separate uh, animations for every different direction that the character's moving in, or at least in a in a orthographic perspective. What's so great about side-scroller games and platformers that are like that is that you only have to create your art from one perspective. Oh, it's so much easier. But when you're creating a game like, like this where your character can move in different directions, creating this 3D art does take more time at first, but in the long run, I think it takes about the same amount of time as 2D pixel art because you don't have to create all those separate animations for different directions. So that's that's one bonus. Well, so it's been fun announcing the new game here on this live stream. Uh, uh, but I got to get rolling, and um, I will be back. I plan on live streaming at least once a week. I do want to do a lot more uh, highlight dev videos as well. So I'll be doing these videos where I kind of highlight what I've done and then upload that straight to YouTube. So maybe like you're looking at like a 10 to 20 minute video rather than a two hour video of me every day, you know, or whatever. So it's, it's if you want to go and look at the game's progress, you'll be able to get you know, the picture faster. So I'll be doing these dev highlight videos and also these live streams with this project. So it was good seeing y'all too. Thanks, man. All right, guys, well, cheers. And yes, it was so great chatting with y'all and I'm looking forward to making this game. So cheers, everybody.